welcome to today's episode of the Western Hemisphere Table Talk. Uh, today, we are very fortunate to be joined by Jennifer King, who is the Chief Commissioner in Barbados. So Jennifer, could you introduce yourself and let us know a bit more about yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Jennifer King. Indeed, I recently became Chief Commissioner of the Association in Barbados. I have been in guidance since hmm, 2000. And I know this because my daughter is now 25 and I started guiding because of my daughter who was five. Um, I got into Blossoms, which would be UK's uh, Rebels, the younger ones. Um, <laughs> I went to do training to become a guider for that session because of my daughter's age. And somehow I've stayed for 25 years, um, for 20 years. So I started off that way as a as just learning to be a guider. And from then I became the Blossom Advisor and Trainer. I did that for a number of years while doing brownies as well. And then for a period of time, I also did guides, the older girls. I had my girls right through. <laughs> so I, each time when my girls got older, I had to increase. I never stopped one. I had to add to it. So I went from blossoms to brownies to guides. I I, I did that, that whole range. Um, but more recently, not even recently, I think a lot of my focus went into training. So I'm a regional trainer, Caribbean Link trainer, and I volunteer. I'm one of the WAGs volunteers as well. I've done a number of the trainings. So it went from the girls to the leaders and then to be a chief commissioner. And all of this started from my five-year-old. Yes. All right. So you weren't involved as a girl just when, as an adult, is that correct? No. Just as an adult, because of my daughter. Yes, just as an adult. But I really, I really loved that age. And I had appreciation going right through as my daughter grew. Like I said, I never stopped one for the other. I love that small age because they're so precocious and their minds are like totally open to anything. So I really love that age group. But obviously I kept growing and each level has its own unique charm to it. Um, so I truly enjoy going right through the ages. And then I think as I dealt as a trainer, I love dealing with new leaders who came in like me. Some came in for their daughters. Some came in for their granddaughters. Some came in for their niece. And I think my joy was when they stayed, like how I stayed, when they stayed with the girl that they came in from outgrew the, the age, but they stayed. They enjoyed it. They saw the benefit of it. They even, and a lot of them have grown as well. I've seen a lot of my leaders just come into their own, being leaders and guiding the girls because in order to, to guide the girls, you have to grow yourself. So you saw the leaders grow. So yeah, so that's how it went. So I went from the very little ones to the leaders, yeah. That's wonderful. So how many uh, sections do you have in Barbados? I know every country is different. I'm from Canada and we have five branches and um, sections in okay. our group. Right. So what's yes. it like in Barbados? So don't let the chief commissioner get it wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> we have the little ones, like I said, the blossoms. We have the brownies, 7 We have the guides. Let me get it wrong. I think they're 13 to 16. Then we have young leaders. And then we also have rangers. So I think we have the same five. Yeah, we have the same five as you do. Yes, and we just have different names for them. I, we just I have different name, names for them. Name for blossoms. That's so cute for the, the little ones. <laughs> yes. And when did, yeah. you, when did you start um, uh, in your role as chief commissioner? Uh, I became chief commissioner the 1st of March of this year. Yeah. So you're very new <laughs> to the role, is it? Yeah, it's very new to it. 
Is it something um, that you envisioned or how did that come to be? Never envisioned it. As I said, I came in strictly for my daughter. Um, I think a lot of the older guiders saw something in me that I did not see. And they they encouraged me a lot. So like I said, I did a whole lot of, I did, um, re like I said, I'm a regional trainer. So then I did a whole lot of training, NLDP, um, um, free BME. So I did all these different trainings. I really enjoyed it. And as I kept dealing with the, the guiders, they, I think we built a really good relationship. And as time went on, these older guiders that I knew just kept pushing me along the way and encouraging me. And somehow, I'm not quite sure how, <laughs> but I ended up here. Um, and I am in, you know, post-COVID. Um, so we're in our rebuilding stage as many, many MOs are. So we are in building stage right now. But I can't say that it wasn't a bad journey. It was just a, a journey I did not expect. <laughs> That's what it was. Do you have mm. any goals um, now that you're in this new role? How do you want to see the organization change or grow from here? I think I want to see, I think my big thing is girl-led advocacy. Um, because I think when I, when I started doing that as a WAGS volunteer, I really got into it. And I really, really was how I always saw it. I always believe that young people need to have a voice and what we need to do is teach them to have their voice, give them a, a space, that brave space to have their voice. So this is something that I have always encouraged with my daughter, with her friends, everything. So this is just something I've always done. And then when you got that training and you cemented the ideas about girl led, and we have to recognize whether we like it or not, we're getting older and what we think the girls want, it's not necessarily what the girls want. And we have to learn to listen more. Um, but what I found is when you spoke to the guiders, that title girl led tend to make them nervous. It's like, I'm being led by children and you're great. But yeah, in truth and fact, yes. Your role as somebody, as somebody have put, I forget who I heard say this. It is like the girls are the river the journey, they're, they're in this river, and as guiders, our role is to be the banks. And we just gently carry them downstream where they want to go. That's our role. So we have we focus now is to getting guiders comfortable with this idea, giving them that safe space, because if they're uncomfortable, they need to be safe enough to say that and say what they need to make them comfortable. So while creating the safe space for the girls, we also, have to create a safe space for the leaders. So that's what we have been trying to do. We've been trying to put on um, events for the, for the leaders, not just the girls. So we've been focusing a lot of our time as well on the leaders as well as just the girls. So that's really what I want to see happen. I want to see more development for the leaders as well. Because the more they develop, the more they can develop the girls. I, I love that perspective on it. The analogy of the river, I, I think that's really golden. Uh, yeah. I might, might use that. And, uh, <laughs> yes, I heard somebody body. use it and it, it stuck in my head. And whenever I envision it, that's, that's exactly how I envision it, the river. The river yeah. and the banks, that's what we are. Yeah. So we're very important because without the banks, the river will, you know, just it's, go everywhere and get nowhere. Yeah. It wouldn't be a river anymore. Uh, nope. Now, you mentioned you um, have worked with WAG. So what? Um, how did you get into that role? When did you start um, working on the international mm. level? Okay, so I got into the WAG's volunteer pool. I can't remember. I think it was while, while we were in COVID. Mm. While we were in COVID, obviously. I think it was 2020 I started. Uh, maybe later, but I started seeing these courses and these opportunities and I started to take them up. And then I think I became, I started with the climate. Um, your mind just went blank. But you know what I mean? It was the, um, I don't know what happened there, but I started with going through volunteering 
And like I said, the one that really, really caught my eye was the girl-led advocacy. And from the time I saw that one, I kind of got hooked right there. Yeah. I did the climate change and it was, I really enjoyed that because obviously that was something that the girls wanted to do as well. And it was lovely seeing the girls realize their, their power and strength in their voice in saying what they wanted and seeing it be taken up by adults. So to me, that led naturally into girl-led advocacy and being a volunteer for them. So I've been a volunteer, I think, since 2000 and, yeah, since 2000, since 2000 or 2001, something like that. The years are all coming together really quickly. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to remember after a while, after the first few years. So well, it's hard to remember, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, that That's wonderful. And um, what do you do outside of guiding? So outside of guiding, I actually am a trained architect, but I am more in charge of a, a, a project unit. So I'm more of a project manager now in government. So I'm in charge of a whole set of buildings, both capital works, which means I build new ones and I maintain them. Um, and I've been doing that now since, well, when I start to add up those years. Wow. I've been doing that since about 2003. And yeah, so I've been, that's what I've been doing for the longest time now. Um, so I'm an architect by training, but an architect and a project manager by training. So that's what I do. That's really... And I have... Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that... yeah. What's happened is, what's interesting about that is that the connection between my work and guiding is that my daughter has also become an architect. But she's left me and she lives in New York. But yes. <laughs> so that's what was interesting about that. That's wonderful. So she followed the, the same path or the very similar same path. path. Same path, same university, same everything. <laughs> yes, she did. This is really strange, but yes, she did. <laughs> so now she's yeah. on her path. <laughs> I, and I found over my years in guiding that I've met lots of people from different different uh, countries and and uh I'm sure you have felt found the same that you probably have friends all over the world because of guiding. Is that true? I do. I do. Um, I think one of the most one of the, the the most enjoyable memories I have was when I did I went to Patch Lodge and I did um, the NLDP training and we met these guiders from Papua New Guinea. That took them twenty four hours to get there. I mean. Just the thought of it, we were all complaining about our long flights and they started to talk about this 24 hours it took them from the time they left their home <laughs> to, to, to get to, to, to UK and we all stopped. But it was like there were such, there were sorts of gentle people. These two ladies were just super, super, super gentle. Super, it was, the spirit was everywhere and there were, I said to myself, this is what guiding is about because it was an automatic connection just talking to them. And it was wonderful that they would travel that far just to do something in guiding, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's amazing how how much people want to, you know, connect with that global sisterhood. And so 24 hours of traveling, it's it's worth it, right? It's worth it. It was totally worth it to them. They totally enjoyed it. They enjoyed meeting everyone and we all enjoyed meeting them. So it was wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Now, do you have any advice for um, people who are, are joining the movement or people who are looking at uh, taking on new roles or opportunities within guiding? I think that we all just need to be very open to it. I think because whether we, we say often we say in different ways, but the youth are our future. 
And the more we put into them, the better our future bees becomes. Not just their future, but our future. Because I don't think we're all planning to die right away. So the better we make their future, our future is better. And when we empower young people, there is literally nothing like it. When you sit and hear young people have that freedom to express themselves and the, and that confidence to do it and know that you are part of that, I think there's, there's no feeling to me that's better than that, none. So when we have guiders, when we see opportunities come up and we, I speak to guiders and I said, you sure you don't want to do that? you are not sure if, they, if they're ready for that. If, I said, you never know until you try. You never know until you try. And I have seen some guiders that I had to hold their hand and encourage and when they let themselves go and got into this role and you you just stood back and you watched them and you you smiled with this pride because this person who was so sure this was too much for them, they just soared, absolutely soared. And I think the opportunities are there for young people, but the opportunities are also there for guiders. And when leaders allow themselves to step out of their comfort zone, it's amazing what can happen. It's absolutely amazing what we can do. I mean, think of how many of us there are. When we all connect, it's it's an amazing, amazing thing to see and to feel and to be part of, um, both on a personal level and a, on an association level. But yeah, the development for yourself as a person is undeniable when you take these opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. I I think a, a lot of times it's a, a bit overwhelming when you yes. think about the, the World Association. Uh, it's quite large. There's 153 countries that are part of it. But at this, in the same uh, way, it's also very small. And very. people, you find out who knows who and you realize you have friends in common from around the world. So I think um, what I find uh, very valuable about being part of this is that connection with everyone. And um, speaking about your experience at Pax Lodge, that sounds mm -hmm. incredible. And do you have any other um, special memories from your experience in guiding that really stand out to you? I think one of the things that stand out, and it may seem really strange to people, um, when I was a Blossom, when I was a Blossom advisor, remember Blossoms are five to seven. Yes. And we used to have the award ceremony, and we had the then Queen's Guide, and we had the Barbados Brownie Guide, but there was nothing for Blossoms. And my little Blossoms did not go through their guider did not go through their advisor. They went directly to their chief commissioner after this ceremony and said to her, how come red doesn't go up there? And she was like, what? <laughs> she was like, she was like, how come red doesn't get a, a, an award? These are, these are five to seven year olds, right? And they went to the chief themselves, quite upset that they were not having some award for themselves. And I remember right after that ceremony, the chief commissioner called me. She says, Jennifer, I said, what's up? She says, your blossoms want an award. I mean, my, 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 five to, my, my five to sevens. She says, yes, your five to sevens are quite upset that there's no award, no national award for them. So you are now tasked with <laughs> creating a national award for them. And that, to me, said it all. That was, that was it. That was it for me because everybody was like, oh, these little girls that just want to play and Mm -mm. my girls were like no don't no so I think it took us we did it by the following year and then they 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 got their awards and they strutted up there in their red and got their awards like everybody else because red red needed to be to be seen so to me that is a moment that I will I think I will never forget that so whenever I hear people talk about girl led and advocacy I said mm-mm I remember my five to sevens. They were adamant. They need to get something. And they went straight to the top to get it. <laughs> That's an incredible story. I, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine that the courage, like they, 
they uh, were very brave and very brave. Uh, <laughs> to the key, chief commissioner. So that is mm -hmm. that is very impressive advocacy for five to seven year olds. Uh, yeah. So anytime anybody tells me, oh, those girls are too young, I go, no, 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 no. Clearly not. Clearly not. <laughs> if you're going straight to the chief right after the ceremony, you 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 don't want your guide, you don't want anybody with you, just go straight to her and make your complaint. <laughs> Yes, and and they were successful. They got the award, and they were successful. Yes, they they were, because she called me right away. She says, "Oh no, they're not going to come at me again and say what's happening." I said, "Okay," so we did that. Yeah, so that is that is a moment to me that I will never forget. That is the strength of advocacy. That is the strength of young girls who feel brave, who have that brave space feel safe that they can say whatever they want and that's the space that we all need to make ensure that these girls have mm -hmm. that is absolutely amazing i think that is a, a great note to end our conversation on um thank you jennifer so much for speaking with me and sharing your knowledge with um the western hemisphere region and beyond and I, I do hope our, our paths uh, cross again. And um, it's yes. been a pleasure uh, speaking with you today. It's been a pleasure speaking to you and I'm sure our paths will cross again. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy the rest of your, your evening and your weekend. So thank you thank again. You thank you, you too.